One of my favorite guys, Ennis Cantor, Portland Trailblazer, pending free agent. You are so fascinating because you played with Durant, you played in yep. New York, then you went to a small market in Portland, uh-huh. and it was a perfect fit. Yep. So let's start about that. They get Nurkic back, yep. meaning you could make an argument they don't mm-hmm. want to double pay for the same skill set. Right. Does it concern you that this team that adopted you within an hour, that you were family right. day one, they may not be able to afford you? I mean, like you said, from the day one, they opened their arm, give me a warm welcome. Well, first, my first, uh, like, 15 games with him, Nurk was playing. And I was coming from the bench. It was an amazing fit. You know, I don't, I, I don't have any problem with coming off the bench I mean, because all I care about is just go out there and win it. So, I mean, it, it's the decision they need to make that if they can, you know, afford me or not. But, I, I mean, everybody, the whole world knows that how much I love playing in Portland and how much I love the, the city. It, it, what was really nice this year is that Damian Lillard finally – was a national story. Yes. He's been great in Portland. This year he became a national story. Mm-hmm. We all went, yeah, he's great, and now we all acknowledge it. Right. Give my audience a sense of what he is like when we don't see him on the court. What what makes him special? Well, I think what makes him special is he makes himself better and he makes everybody else better around him. That's what makes him really special. And, uh, I mean, I know he was an amazing player, but I didn't know what kind of person he was before I get to Portland. But once I get to Portland, I'm like, that's why this organization is so professional and amazing because it starts with him. And because just how he treats players. I mean, his teammates, I remember in that locker room, everybody has so much confidence because of him. And everybody feels so comfortable just playing with Dame because he's actually a very nice guy. Yeah. They always say you're as good as your star in the NBA. Yes. He'll set the tone yes. for the locker room. If your star's a good dude, sharing, caring, and a hard worker, everybody else feels they have to work equally hard. Yeah, that's exactly who he is, man. Yeah. All right, so let's let's talk about um, Kevin Durant. So you played, and we all change in life. Right. Young Kevin Durant didn't have two titles. Right. Young Kevin Durant isn't the Kevin Durant now. He has changed. He's yep. evolved. Uh, he's still a little needy for me. <laughs> um, I don't think he should go to New York. That's my takeaway. You okay. played in New York. Yep. You know James Dolan. You know the dysfunction. Right, right. Do you think he goes to New York, and how does it work if he does? Um, but I've, if I was him, I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong. I love New York. I love the Knicks. You know, I love the fans, MSG, and everything is cool. But I think I, I see him going to Brooklyn with Kyrie. Because, I mean, it's, I know KD, and uh, I know his personality and everything. The media might be a little harsh on him with New York. Because if you're KD, if you're going to the Knicks, if you're not winning, they're going to blame you. And But I think, I think I feel like I see him going to, to Brooklyn. I wish he went to the Knicks. I wish he go to the Knicks. But I think I see him going to Brooklyn. Do you think he could play well? I mean, why Why do you think he would give up all that money? Like, is he unhappy in Golden State? I, don't, I, I would never say he's unhappy. Obviously, he would just want a, the, the title and everything. But I think all that injury stuff and everything, I think he's kind of a little mad at the the Warriors. And, um, well, I think I think, it'll be a, I think Brooklyn will be a good, good fit for him. When you... We talk about money on the table. So I want you to talk as a professional athlete. I, I, if if Kawhi is my son yes. or my client, I could never say give up fifty million. Yeah. I could never tell a professional athlete because I know the billionaire guy up top. Right. He's not giving money back yep. every <laughs> penny. In fact, I think the billionaires at the top of these leagues love it when players feel loyalty and they got to get titles and the owner's like yes i'll save more (laughs) money um could you give up 50 million dollars guaranteed oh well if i am if i was in their shoes and if i am if i'm that caliber of a player i'm gonna make that money of endorsements so i yes if i am trying to win i will give up that much money to go to a team that where I can play and be happy and play basketball that I love but because I know if my team do good, I'm going to make that money from an endorsement. So, so winning's like, most important to you? To me, yes, winning is more important. When you're on a losing basketball team, is and it a I, miserable life oh, even though your paychecks you are big? No idea, man. Tell, tell me. I mean, I, I had a stretch with the Knicks with a whole month. We only got one win. And I remember I was seeing everybody, my, my teammates face in the locker room. It was just... You know that I, I, everybody worked so hard in their love with their for basketball. We, we were just not having fun. You know the basketball that you love to doing your job is just not becoming fun anymore. You just don't even want to go to practice because you're losing every game. 
it, it was just it was just so frustrating and it was just so bad but um i think it everything so with winning you know if, i mean i just once i get to portland man i was like my life changed you know i was just i was just a different person not a player i was, I was a different you're person. happier happier yes so you went you didn't you do a fasting during the playoffs yes i did okay so i got to ask about this so you didn't eat anything or drink anything. Okay, for how long? For especially because we were in Portland, it was seventeen hours. Okay, so was there a game that day? Uh, yes, it was. Especially it was in Denver too. Now, was this religious? Yes. Okay, so it was it, the month of uh, Ramadan. Okay, so your month of Ramadan. So you went seventeen hours, nothing, no water. No water. No drinking. How, as a professional athlete, did you well, do that? Um, so I do it once or twice a week do it during the season. So my buddies yeah, used to doing it. And the fact that I just wanted to go out and show the whole world that game of basketball is mental over uh, physical. So if you put your mind on it, then you can do it. Just because oh, I just wanted to show the whole world, my mind was so sharp. And I was like, there's no way I can go out there and play bad because they're going to blame the Ramadan. And I just went out there, man, just, just pay attention to little details and then... Uh, no water. I remember actually. So we were in the water break. But this water guy just kept giving me water. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. You know, because he, he didn't know I was fasting. And then after a sudden, why don't you why don't you drink water? It's like, hey, I'm fasting. I was like, man, I'm sorry. And uh, I remember my teammates were drinking waters and Gatorades and right next to me. I'm like, man, that, 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 that looks good. But uh, you know what? I'm like, I got. I, I, I was looking at the time. I'm like, I was keep asking the trainers like, how many hours left? It was like two hours left. <laughs> <laughs> One hour left. I was like, okay, you can break your fast uh, during the uh, during halftime. So I was just eating some like peanut butter and jelly sandwich, some bananas, and oh. uh, it was fine. Good for you. Mental strength. Okay. So I heard a terrible thing. I love Zion Williams. Okay. He can pass. He's big. He's strong. I think he's got a magnetism. Okay. You think he's overrated. Oh. Just say it. You can say it. Uh, okay. I So... <sighs> I it. kind of feel like he's overhyped. I feel like he's Julius Randle with hops. He's Julius Randle with hops. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's how I believe. By the way, you're not the first person who said that. Yes. Oh, well, some players are even like scared to say it, but you know me. You know, I'm not yeah. scared to say anything. So you know, Julius Randle, but more vertical. Well, yes. There you go. That's exactly what I How would you always. defend him? Oh, uh, well, I would just defend, uh, probably just, I would just le- let him shoot. You know, but I, I, if he develop his shot, uh, he's definitely will, could become a Hall of Famer. But I mean, it's it's all in his his hand. He just need to put the uh, work in and just go out there and just uh, just to show the whole world. You know, it's interesting. Uh, um, you played Denver and beat them. Yes. Denver was really young. Very. Toronto won the final. They were really old. Mm-hmm. I think there's incredible value to players 29, 30, 31 in this league. Right. Uh, I think it's a man's league. Uh, in fact, I'm a big believer that college kids um, should stay in college for two years for mm-hmm. mental growth, right. physical growth. A lot of these guys come in after one year, they fall apart physically. They're dealing with you, yes. and you're 35 pounds heavier and stronger yeah. than a college center. So w- when you look at all these veterans and you watch the draft, um, how do veterans like you – You've been in the NBA now. It'll be your ninth year. Mm-hmm. How do you look at rookies? Oh man, just to just to abuse them on the oh, floor. Yes, we cannot wait for, for them to come to the league. And just because of they hype him so much and they this and that and they, I mean, they're rookie. They are already saying, oh, he's gonna become a Hall of Famer. He hasn't played a minute in NBA in NBA court yet. So they were just hyping him so much. I feel like our us veterans just cannot wait. For them to just go out there and play against them. And whenever we play against them, I was like, okay, welcome to the man's league. I love what Kobe Bryant said is NBA no boys allowed. <laughs> so I, I, I love that comment. Like, Every time I go out there, I'm like, it's a man's league, man. So just go out there and just sh- show the re- uh, welcome to welcome to the league. Oh, by the way, I, I couldn't have you on if I didn't ask about Westbrook. Okay. Uh, I'm very critical of Westbrook. <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't know that from last year. No I'm not, <laughs> I don't hate him. I think he's overhyped. I think he's hard to play with. I think there's a certain rigidity to him that makes it difficult he's had a the last couple years the playoffs have been ugly if i said to you tomorrow you could play with durant again or westbrook who did you enjoy playing with more 
I ask that question almost. I, I get that question almost every week. Really? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, every week from somebody. The kids ask me about the, the bas- you know, basketball camps or just some media guy asks me this and that. I will pick Rasbrook any day. Really? I, I just I, I just have so much fun playing with him. And people are keep saying, like, I know you just, you know, you don't like him as much. But uh, he is actually not hard to play with, man. Like, literally. And uh, when, whenever you're in his team, it's just you cannot take any position, not games, any position off. Every time, like, you're out there, he just make, he fires you up, gets you ready for a 40 game. Durant, don't get me wrong, I'm obviously he's one of the best in the whole world, but I'll definitely pick Westbrook. Cannot believe that. <laughs> By the way, you're wearing a herd shirt. Can we we see this? Look there at the go. loyalty to the brand. It is a loyalty. And I isn't that amazing? I heard you have a present for me. I uh, yes, I do. I know you're a the Blazer. You're a Blazer I've fan. I've covered them for six and a half years. Yeah. And I've always go. been called a zero, so you got me a double zero. Doubles, yep, there you go. Thank you very much. Oh, no problem, much. my man. Lee, you are the best. There you go. NS Canner. Good seeing you, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.